just with it being such a glorious week, really from Selection Sunday to now, you know, with all the buzz around Razorback Athletics, the basketball team brushing off Colgate in the first round of the NCAA tournament, Devo bringing it, sparking that 17-0 run, coming out here for a Saturday scrimmage, the first time we've had one since red-white game 2019. Felt the need to top it off a little bit with a walk and talk. Kind of an impromptu. Sorry if the audio stinks. Uh, I didn't bring my recorder and just kind of decided to do this. But, man, let's talk a little bit about basketball also. But first, you know, just with the scrimmage. And, and be sure to tune into Curtis Wilkerson's instant reaction from Indianapolis. He's doing a great job covering Razorback basketball. But uh, I really thought in this scrimmage today, I felt like the defense kind of got the best of the offense overall. Now, Sam Pittman kind of saw it pretty evenly, but, you know, just basing on when they're doing third down work with the first team and the second team, the defense won like one out of seven both times, you know, so two out of 14, well, two out of 16, I guess they ran eight, 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 eight and eight. So the defense won in those categories. You know, I thought overall they played well. Now, KJ Jefferson did finish 10 of 17, 10 of 15 for 117 yards, two touchdowns and interception. Blake Hornsby is 7 to 16 for 94 yards. Appreciate you, Danny West, for keeping up with the statistics on that. Um, Traylon Smith, 8 for 69, rushing. Raheem Sanders, 6 for 57. Probably in the running game, Raheem Sanders had, you know, the most impressive day just because he's a young guy. Nothing like seeing a young running back out there. He goes about 6'2", 220 now. Rocket Sanders, you know he's got a lot of speed. So it was good to see him out there having some success. You know, one thing that I think stood out kind of me, was how much special teams work. And we kind of forgot to ask Sam Pittman about that, but just like you don't see that much special teams work in a spring scrimmage, in spring at all. But they've been working punt team, kickoff team, kickoff return, uh, punt return, all that stuff, uh, you know, field goal, PAT, extra point, all that stuff. And you don't usually see that as much. And I think part of the reason is because you rely on a lot of young, new players to do that. So you don't want to have to like start all over again, you know, and kind of waste that time when you get to fall camp. But they've had so many early enrollees. In addition to like having the 10 seniors return, they've had, you know, so many early enrollees that I think they're able to just kind of get a jump on that. What is it, 13 is the total for scholarship, just scholarship players. So uh, Traylon Burks, four for 68 uh, and a touchdown reception. John David White, three for 55 of the touchdown. Almost had another one, had another not nice long uh, reception. Blake Kern, four for 37 and a touchdown. Hudson Henry, three for 48. And Dorian Gerald had a couple of sacks. So, you know, that's a quick rundown. I almost forgot how to cover a scrimmage. Like, I'm looking at Danny, I'm like, you got stats? You got stats? You got play by play? I got observations. I got depth chart. You got this? You know, it's like we're kind of doing it on the fly. I just kind of forget how we're supposed to do it because things have been locked down so much. But, man, doesn't it feel like we're starting to finally turn the corner just with having March Madness out there now? You know, you forget how much you missed it. You know, when Arkansas was going down, I was just, just kind of like, crap, what's going on here? Is this. Is this going to turn around? And then Devo made that steal in the bucket and made another steal. Really sparty. And then close it off with that driving layup at the end. You're just like, get some now. Get some, Colgate. Took him a little bit. I, I kind of thought Musk was like, you know, maybe holding that full court press a little bit until the second half so they wouldn't have be able to adjust to it all. Um, but, man, he brought it out and the intensity turned up. I thought it was I thought it was awesome. You know, just going over, I know I'm flipping flat back and forth here, but, you know, just going back over football, I've been really intrigued with some of these young guys that I'm seeing, like Jalen St. John, Marcus Henderson, you know, Ray Curry, Takias Crawford, who didn't scrimmage today, um, you know, a couple of injury updates. They, they think Jalen Catalan will be back Tuesday. That's the last practice where they take spring break. Isaiah Nichols didn't scrimmage today. Probably a little bit of time on him. Uh, Hayden Henry didn't scrimmage today, and that's kind of, you know, the plan with him because they want him to get his shoulder back fully healthy. So they're not doing, you know, a bunch of live stuff with him. They want him to get fully healthy. And that was kind of, you know, the guarantee, I guess, that they made to him uh, for him coming back because they did want him to come back, obviously. So just a couple of injury things. But, you know, those young offensive linemen, I just look at, I look at Takias Crawford, who goes 6'5", 355. And I look at Jalen St. John, who was running right guard next to him. And I think Takias is probably your right tackle of the future. Marcus Henderson on the left side, left tackle of the future. But I think if Jalen St. John at 6'5", 340, Takias Crawford at 6'5", 355, and I'm thinking that's that's about 700 pounds protecting your future on the right side one day. You know, that's that's what we're talking about here. You know, this it's great that you've got so much experience coming back on the offensive line, six guys with a combined 45 stars. But to me, you know, those guys have all had to, like, pack on the pounds, you know, and part of that's, 
you know, just from the previous staff, wanting them to slam up, just how they wanted to do things. But they had to pack on pounds. You've got guys like packing on 35 pounds. I think Myron Cunningham is up 40 pounds, you know, since being 290 under Morris, and now he's at 330. So the difference is you've got Jalen St. John has dropped 19 pounds to get to 340. You know, Marcus Henderson is a guy that played well over 300 pounds in high school, obviously played tight end, so that's kind of a different deal. Uh, Ray Curry is down to 300 pounds from 320. Takias Crawford's 355, which is about 20 pounds more than he was in high school. They'll probably take some down, but man, he, it's impressive how he moves. Um, I love, again, there's nothing that I like more than just like a really good looking young freshman SEC running back and loving what I'm seeing out of Raheem Sanders, intrigued by what's going to happen when A.J. Green arrives, who I think just dropped a 4-3 in the I mean, he's a 10 3 800 meter guy at his personal best. So intrigued about that future. I really think that they have a chance here to be, to put together a team that, you know, you started kind of turning the corner last year. If they can get, if the quarterback situation, we all know it's going to come down to quarterback, right? If the quarterback situation can get right and, you know, they feel comfortable with probably KJ, then that could be a huge step in the right direction for them. And obviously, I feel like the pieces are, are good. You know, you got 20 starters returning, but, you're going to have some guys get beat out. You know, 20 starters from the last game last year. That doesn't include, like, Dalen Catalan and Grant Morgan. They didn't start the last game either, you know. So you're going to have some other guys, some young players, I think, really start to emerge um, and beat out some guys that, you know, you, you you know considered a starter last year. And that's just going to make them better overall. Uh, I've, I've said before, having so many seniors return, 10 scholarship seniors return, that didn't include some, you know, there's some walk-on to seniors that are returning also. But 10 scholarship re seniors returning, helps you close the gap from a talent standpoint with some of, you know, some of the teams out there that maybe have recruited a little bit higher level the last few years. Uh, talent and experience, you know, those are kind of the two meshing points. So for Arkansas to be able to close that gap a little bit with so many returning players and experience, I think is going to be really huge for this program and, and helping them maybe take a, a, a bigger step forward next year. Schedule is always going to be brutal, of course, but uh, that's just kind of my thoughts. It's been fun. I appreciate Sam Pittman, Kyle Parkinson working things out from SID department, letting us go out and watch an hour of practice. We've watched, they've had six practices, and and five of them, I've been in attendance. One of them, it rained, so they, they went inside. Five of them, I've been in attendance. Four of them were an hour long, and then this was a two-hour scrimmage. We haven't had that. We have not had that before. We didn't get to watch them in team at all last year, so... It's been really fun for me personally, you know, especially with everything that's going on with this pandemic, to be able to get around sports and get around this program. It's not the same yet, but man, it's, it gets getting close to it. What can you say about the basketball team? I mean, <laughs> it's been, it's just been so fun to watch those guys and the intensity that you see from Musselman. And I don't know what else you say. Maybe, maybe you let Macho Man say something. Indianapolis, Indiana. Hinkle Fieldhouse, where Butler plays basketball. Yeah. Baylor, Texas Tech, who are you? Seat at the table. Yeah, I'm going to have their cup of coffee if you've got a problem. Not as good as the Razorbacks. Oh, yeah. Things are popping. Yeah, things are cultivating. The must bus is rolling. And you can't stop at Jim Nance.